Hello everyone, uh, my name is Sandra Vale and I'm the manager of the National Allergy Strategy. We're really pleased to be able to hold this webinar in collaboration with the Australian Digital Health Agency. We would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of country throughout Australia and their continuing connection to land, sea and community. Uh, we pay our respects to them and their cultures and to elders both, both past and present. I'll firstly run through um, some housekeeping before we get started with the presentation and the question and answer session. Um, everyone who is not a presenter or a panellist this evening will be on mute throughout the entire presentation. If you have a question, and we do encourage you to ask your questions, um, you can do that through the chat function. Just a reminder to um, keep your questions general and about my health record. Uh, we will also have an evaluation at the end of the webinar, so please complete that as it will help us to make these types of events as valuable as possible in the future. Before we get to the presentation, I'll hand over to Maria Sade, who will be well known to many of you. Maria has been a member of Allergy and Anaphylaxis Australia since 1993 and the CEO since 1999. Maria is also a co-chair of the National Allergy Strategy. Maria advocates for people living with allergic conditions, including food allergy and anaphylaxis. Maria is a member of the Australasian Society of Clinical Immunology and Allergy, or ASCIA, which is the peak medical body for allergy and immunology in Australia and New Zealand. And, and she is also a member of several ASCIA committees. Maria, can you talk about how you see My Health Record being helpful for people with allergies? Thanks, Sandra. Uh, my health record, I think, is an important tool for people to uh, understand uh, and learn to use. Um, people who have chronic conditions, who have have to manage uh, umpteen doctor's visits, people who are on several medications, um, people who have conditions where treatment might change, um, it that in itself is a stress to people. So having my health record as a place that uh, stores your information about your health, any changes that are made, really helps to, um, to communicate uh, with all the health professionals caring for you, having your GP at the centre of all of that. Um, people who have chronic health conditions uh, are often going from doctor to doctor and sometimes the terminology isn't terminology we understand. Uh, so having a doctor uh, download information into my health record that you can then show to another doctor um, is, is a good thing, a good step in the right direction. Often as consumers or patients, we find ourselves chasing very time poor doctors who mean really well uh, for information because we've got another doctor's appointment. I see my health record as a, uh, as a place where we can um, have trusted information, information that we can rely on so that uh, it makes our lives easier. So it makes caring for our conditions easier and as transparent as we need it to be, so that those who are caring for us or about us have access uh, and are able to uh, make better informed decisions on our long-term care. Thanks, Sandra. Thanks, Maria. Um, it's now my pleasure to introduce Marwa Osman, Osman, who will be giving us an overview of my health record to make sure everyone is familiar with my health record, what it is, and the types of information that my health record includes. Marwa is an adoption and clinical use lead at the Australian Digital Health Agency, and she's also an accredited pharmacist. She has over 12 years experience in pharmacy, working in both community setting and conducting home medicines reviews. She is passionate about utilising digital health strategies to enhance patient outcomes and improve medicine safety. Thank you, Marwa, for joining us this evening and we look forward to your presentation. Thank you, Sandra. 
So as Sandra mentioned, tonight I'm going to be talking to you about how my health record can help uh, if you have allergies in sharing that and communicating that information with um, those healthcare providers that are looking after you. To start off with, I briefly want to touch on um, the National Digital Health Strategy, which is the roadmap for the Australian Digital Health Agency and where we would like, um, where we would envision our health system to be. Essentially, it's about connecting the entire health system. Um, there are seven pillars that make up the National Digital Health Strategy and the first pillar of this, the My Health Record System, is what we're going to focus on today, which is all about having health information um, that is available whenever and wherever it's needed. So um, if something is you know, shared by your general practitioner and then you are admitted to hospital for uh, an emergency situation, for example, that the hospital can access that information um, fairly quickly upon your admission um, to help them make those decisions in very time critical situations to provide you the most appropriate care for your health conditions. So what is my health record? Essentially, it's an online summary of an individual's key health information. And as I mentioned in my previous example, you know, if you're in a situation where you have a car accident or you're unconscious um, and you're not able to communicate that information about yourself to the hospital, um, they're able to access the My Health Record. And if your healthcare providers have been uploading to the health record or you've you've been uploading through personal um, health um, your personal health summary, for example, you're able, um, the hospital staff are able to access that information um, in a very time critical situation, you know, where th the smallest amount of time makes a difference, you know. So um, having knowledge, for example, that you're allergic to a particular medicine um, fairly quickly may help them make decisions if you need to have emergency surgery following an accident um, and so on. So it's, it's very, very useful for those healthcare providers and it means that you get the best standard of care, you know, they'll be able to more quickly access your emergency contacts, um, your medicines information, your immunisation history, and then tailor the care they provide for you specifically. Now, the My Health Record is also personally controlled. So you're able to control who can see your health information. You're able to place access codes on the record um, so that you restrict access to which health providers can access it. And I'll talk a little bit more about that later on. Um, it's part of a national system, so you can access it anywhere around Australia and it helps you remember your medical information, which is particularly useful if you are seeing multiple um, healthcare providers. So if you're seeing multiple specialists um, or if you're even, you know, for your children, you know, different children may be seeing different specialists for various health conditions or perhaps another family member that you're a carer for. There are lots of details that you need to retain um, and sometimes, particularly when you're in a stressful situation, as you know, as are most conditions when they're concerned with a person's health and well-being, you know, um, sometimes under pressure we can forget um, relatively important information to pass on to our healthcare providers, to those doctors and those nurses and those allied health professionals that are trying to help us um, get better. So it helps you remember your medical information and this is key. Um, you're also able to see information that's uploaded by your healthcare providers. So when you access your own My Health record um, through MyGov, for example, or through um, the various apps, so there are approved applications that you can use to access your My Health record, you're able to see not just the information you've uploaded about yourself, but you're actually also able to view what your healthcare providers have uploaded about your health. And we actually encourage this because by looking at that information, you can ensure that that information is indeed accurate. Yes, I am allergic to that. Yes, these are my current medicines that I'm on at the moment. Um, and if there's um, any anomalies or any errors there, you can actually, um, you know, contact your general practitioner or update your personal health note to correct that so that if you're placed in a situation where, you know, you're in hospital and you say, look at my health record, it is actually reflecting your current health status. Now, the My Health record is protected um, not only by, um, you know, super cybersecurity, but also by legislation so that if any health professional actually accesses health professional, uh, sorry, this, you know, person's health information from there for a person that's not their patient, for example, um, that's something that's legal and it's, um, there is an audit log of anybody that accesses the My Health record and they would be severely punished by law. 
So how does the My Health record work? Healthcare providers are able to view um, information that's in the My Health record either through conformance software, so they need to be using software that's conformant with the My Health record system. Um, and while the majority of um, general practice software is is conformant. Um, with regards to specialists, that's something that the Digital Health Agency is currently working on. Um, so most specialist software is not conformant at the moment. And so if they're not using conformant software, they would be accessing the My Health record through the National Provider Portal. Um, now, using the National Provider Portal, they can view all the information that's in a person's My Health record, but they're not able to upload or contribute to that information at this stage. Now, as I mentioned, the Digital Health Agency is working on um, getting uh, specialist software to become uh, conformant. So we're, they're working with the software industry to improve that so that specialists can also contribute to the, the information that's in the My Health record. Now, you as a consumer or patient are able to also view your own My Health record um, and you can upload um, information into your My Health record through MyGov um, and you can also view via other applications as well. So where's the My Health record at at the moment? Uh, there's over 22.9 million My Health records, and what that means is nine out of ten Australians have a My Health record. So it was it's been created for most Australians unless they've actually opted out of having a My Health record. So anyone with um, a Medicare or DVA card would have had one a My Health record created for them unless they've opted out of having one. But in terms of what's actually in there, if they're not um, you know, engaged with that record if they're not opening it and having a look at it. Um, if, you know, if they're not using, um, we do encourage them to use that My Health record because um, probably what will be in there if they're not contributing to it is things like, um, you know, prescription records from their prescriber, um, dispense records from their community pharmacy, um, perhaps discharge summaries if they're admitted to hospital and discharged because all of these things are automatically uploaded unless they request for them not to be from their, their doctor or from their pharmacy. Um, but we do encourage you to um, get engaged and actually view your own My Health record, view your children's records, view the records for those that you are the carer of um, to ensure that that information that's reflected in that record is accurate um, and reflecting their current health status. In terms of what's in there and what's being uploaded um, to the record by healthcare providers, um, so there's over 129 clinical documents, you know, and they are, come from a variety of sources. And if, one of the really important things um, that's uploaded by the main healthcare provider you see, which is most often your general practitioner or the practice nurse at the clinic, um, is a shared health summary. And I'll show you in a little bit what that looks like, but it captures, it, it's an, essentially a snapshot of your key health information at that particular point in time, reflecting your health at that status, that serves as a great starting point for any other healthcare providers who provide care for you. That's, you know, that great background snapshot that they can continue to build um, information on. Um, in terms of how consumers are contributing, there's um, over 358,000 consumer documents that have been uploaded to the records. Now, over 232,000 of these are personal health summaries, and this is where you as a consumer can update information or um, input information into the My Health record about your allergies. So, um, whether you're allergic to something or whether you're confirming that, you know, you've been tested and you're not allergic to something, that's also very critical information to upload as well. In terms of the documents that can be uploaded to My Health Record, so you can think of these, I guess, under three main banners. So there's those documents that a patient can upload themselves to their My Health Record. There's documents that are uploaded by um, Service Australia and they're the Medicare documents. Um, and then there's the provider documents that are uploaded by healthcare providers. And the most important of, in these, um, when looking at provider documents are things like the shared health summary 
from the main care provider you see, um, so most likely your GP, discharge summaries from hospital that outline you know, what's happened in this particular episode of care. And this can be really useful when you represent to your GP. So after you've been discharged from hospital and perhaps that discharge summary wasn't ready or it's been misplaced because you've been thinking about you know, managing a lot of other things you know, coming out of this hospital stay. Um, and so this, this is left behind and you present to the doctor and you can't recall all the details. He, can, uh, he or she can log on to the My Health record um, and be able to access that. And you know, with 97% 90, of um, public hospitals connected to the My Health record um, system and 95% you know, using it with those discharge summaries uploaded, you're like, they're likely to find that information there. So that saves time, you know, saves time for the um, clinic, saves your time waiting for that information to be obtained before the doctor can make any further decisions about your care and where to go from here. Um, in terms of um, patient documents that are uploaded, um, as I mentioned, that there's the personal health summary, which is where you would update information, you know, about things like medicines you're currently taking, health conditions, um, allergies, um, or things that you're not allergic to that have, you know, that you've been confirmed not allergic to. Um, you can also use this to upload advanced care planning documents um, or custodian details. You can um, view childhood development information. Um, and you can update your emergency contacts. So very useful um, to upload all of these things there because you know they're there and accessible and all you have to do, in, particularly in emergency situations, is direct a healthcare provider or remind them that your information is up to date in the My Health record and they'll have a look at that, um, whether it's for you or your child or a person that you care for. Um, with regards to Medicare documents, um, you can also, um, it will also reflect your organ donor uh, status there. So um, healthcare providers will be able to view um, your organ donor preferences. And you also have access um, through the Australian, to the Australian Immunisation Register records in there as well. And this is um, particularly useful now with um, the COVID vaccination rollout, because you can use this um, as evidence um, that you are up to date with your COVID vaccination or that you've had the first one and you're waiting for your second one and it was, you know, AstraZeneca or, or Pfizer and so on. Um, so very, very useful source of um, information there. So as I mentioned, GPs can upload um, shared health summaries um, amongst other things. And I mentioned that the shared health summary was like a snapshot of your health at a particular point in time. So it captures four key things. The first is the allergies and adverse reactions. Um, and it you know, lists the substances, what the manifestation of that was. Um, and then underneath that, a list of the current medicines that a person is taking, their medical history, and finally a list of their immunizations. And um, at the end is the administrative details that actually lists who the healthcare provider is that's um, prepared this document and which organisation they've uploaded this document from. And this is vital when you know you consider situations where someone's presenting to the emergency department, for example, and you know further information is needed that they're not going to spend time um, you know trying to find. Um, who this person's main care provider is. They've got that instantly from that shared health summary and they can reach out to them if they need to find out um, further information about something specific. So huge time saver in a situation um, where time is of the essence um, to provide you and your family members um, or those you care for with the highest standard of personalised care. Um, now, we mentioned that allergy information would also be available in the My Health record. So, in the medicines information view, um, which is a view that condenses all of the medicines information that's in the record into the single screen, and you can, um, you know, sift for it by a certain date. So, uh, for example, you can search for medicines information in the last two years, um, and that's, you know, simplified into that. Um, condensed into that single screen. That's all hyperlinked. So, all the blue that you see there is actually hyperlinked to the original document that that information has come from or the source document. So um, for example, you can see that there's a top 
uh, in the top um, left hand corner there the allergies and adverse reactions section if I click on that it takes me to the um, information on allergies and adverse reactions that lists who's entered this allergy so there's a cashew allergy that's been reported there the source of that is the patient themselves um, so that's you know something that the patient has uploaded um, and the, you know if I click on that it'll take me to that personal health summary where that um, information was uploaded. Um, similarly, this was also uploaded by a hospital and I can click on that and I'll be able to view that. Um, and um, similarly for these medicines reactions there as well. So how can patients engage with the My Health Record system? So you can actually access the My Health Record through, um, as I mentioned, logging in through MyGov. Um, and accessing the My Health record. Um, you can, once you've logged in, you can go to documents. Um, and it'll take you to this list that you see on the screen. So you've got, you know, you can view clinical records, medicines information, which is uh, which I, very similar to what I just showed you in the previous screen just there. But this is the view from a healthcare provider's perspective. Um, whereas the view we're looking at, or I'm about to show you now, is going to be looking from a, a consumer's perspective. So when a patient is looking at their um, My Health record through MyGov, um, logging in through MyGov, um, or if they're looking at, you know, the record of a child or someone that they care for. And here's the Medicare overview information, advanced care planning. And here they've got a quick link to key information I've added. So if you've been uploading things to the record, if you go to that, um, click on that, it'll take you to um, anything that you've personally contributed to in your um, health record and you can update that accordingly as the need arises. So patients can also add allergy information to the My Health record um, and they can do this via a personal health summary. Um, and this can include um, de-labeling information. So remember those situations where you're confirming that you're not allergic to something. So um, what we've got on the screen there is showing you that how important that wording is, um, confirmed not allergic to penicillin. And then, you know, it's recommended that you include the date of the challenge test and the name of the specialist um, that this um, challenge test was conducted with as, as evidence so that um, it can be easily traced back if need be. Um, and this is how you can edit allergy and adverse reaction information. So um, you can, you know, select allergy, um, aller the first substance that you're allergic to there. So here we want to indicate that we're not allergic to uh, amoxicillin and the reaction we've listed there is, you know, past challenge test eight. And as you can see there, there is the option to remove and update that as needed. Now, I mentioned earlier that a patient's My Health Record is personally controlled. So a patient can control um, their My Health Record and that of um, you know, their children uh, up to the age of 14. Um, and they can choose to um, simply have their My Health Record there and not place any access codes on it. And what that would mean is any healthcare provider who is providing care for them or for their child is able to access that record and any documents within that record. Or a person may choose to place um, an access code on the record. So um, they can place an access code on the entire record, which is known as a record access code or RAC. Um, and if, if they do that, it means that a healthcare provider would not be able to um, get into that record entirely unless they're given um, a PIN or a, that access code by the patient during a consultation. Once you give them that PIN number, they're able to access your record um, for the next three years without being given the code every time and any other health provider at that same clinic. So if you give it to one GP at an organisation, the other GPs would be able to access it as well for the next three years, unless you log into My Health Record yourself and revoke that access earlier, which you're able to do at any time. Um, now, there is also the option to um, leave your uh, My Health record accessible to all healthcare providers without placing an access code on the record, but you can restrict access to a particular document. So if there is, say, a document that, you know, has um, um, 
a test result, for example, a pathology result that you're a little bit uncomfortable about that you would rather not have all, all healthcare providers access um, this document, although we do recommend that you generally keep, um, you know, allow access for all healthcare providers to view that, you still do have the option to restrict access to that document and place an access code just on that document, um, and that's known as a limited document access code. Now, in an emergency situation, so say you're admitted to the emergency department unconscious because of a car accident, there is also an emergency or break glass functionality um, that um, healthcare providers are able to use to bypass any access codes because your life could be at risk um, and therefore they need that information in, in order to um, provide you with appropriate care in a, in a relatively time efficient manner. Um, um, any use of the emergency access functionality by um, any healthcare provider is audited by the system operator, which is the Australian Digital Health Agency. So, um, and it will also appear, so you're actually able to view an audit log of who is actually viewing your My Health record um, when you log on to MyGov. So, there's, you know, if there's any inappropriate use at any stage, it's, it, you know, it's easily, um, it's easily found and, and um, severely punished by law. So where to go from here for further information and support? Um, I'll just exit from this now because I'd actually like to take you to these um, different resources and quickly show you um, what they are. So the first of all is the National Allergy Strategy website. Um, and I've got that on the screen there. So the National Allergy Strategy website um, has a wealth of information and I encourage you to take the time to browse through the various um, resources that are there. Um, there is also a, a specific um, page on My Health Record um, for consumers that takes you to the various guides um, that would be useful to you in using the My Health Record and I'll actually open up these guides and show you now. Um, now, we do have links to all of these resources um, in the slides um, and you will receive a copy of these slides in the post-event email in the coming days. So this is the first resource um, that's on the website, which is getting set up with My Health Record, a guide for consumers. So it talks you through what MyGov is, um, how to um, create a MyGov if you don't have one, or sign into your existing one and go through um, the process um, if you don't have uh, a My Health Record to get that set up. But as I mentioned, most people would have a My Health Record set up unless they've opted out of having one prior. Um, and then what to expect the first time you sign in to um, the My Health Record. And in the next one, the next resource there, it's how to add allergy, allergy information to your My Health Record or, you know, for your child or your carer's uh, My Health Record profile. Um, talks about the importance of including that information in the My Health Record um, so that it's easily accessed by healthcare providers caring for you or your loved ones. Um, and then it guides you through screenshots of how to actually add that allergy information. So very, very useful um, resources there that um, I think you'll find beneficial in, in the use of the My Health Record system. Just open up the presentation again. And so now with that, I'd like to um, hand back to Sandra, who I believe will introduce our panellists. Thanks, Marla, and that was a really great um, presentation, gave a, a really nice overview of My Health Record and, and what we can expect to find in there and how we can, um, how we can use it. Um, we've got some questions coming through, so we're going to go on to our um, Q&A session now, and I do have um, some uh, additional panel members to introduce. We'll welcome Maria back um, with us as well. Um, and we've got uh, Dr. William Smith, um, who is a senior consultant, there's William, um, and head of clinical immunology and allergy unit at the Royal Adelaide Hospital, as well as a consultant physician, clinical immunology and allergy specialist at Allergy SA. Um, William is a member and a past president of ASCIA and is also a project co-lead um, for the National Allergy Strategy My Health Record Project. So thank you for joining us, William. 
And we are also joined by Dr. Aaron Chambers, who is the Director of Grow Life Medical and Allergy First GP, um, led um, allergy clinics. Um, he is also the GP Liaison Officer for the Children's Health Queensland and a member of um, ASCIA. So welcome to Aaron as well and welcome back to Maria. So um, we've got some questions that I'm going to um, put to our panel. Let me just um, pull those over so I can read them. Okay, so the first question um, I wanted to put to you was what do I do if my doctor doesn't want to use my health record or he doesn't know how to use my health record? How do I encourage them to do so? Who would like to have a have a go at that one? Maybe Aaron, would you like to tackle that one for us? Sure, yeah, um, I'm happy to. Um, I guess as the GP in the room, uh, general practice has been using my health record for quite a while now and I think the bulk of general practices are capable of, of accessing my health record and uh, and helping patients either upload a shared health summary like um, uh, like Moa showed, um, or you know helping with utilising download of that information to access pathology results that sort of thing. If if your provider is nervous or, or unable or unwilling to do so, um, first of all, I'd ask the question you know why. So, so there are some uh, software systems that have trouble, but most are able these days. Um, and I think it's it's really important, you know, I think um, this information is so essential for your healthcare that I think it's worthwhile having that conversation, working through the barriers and asking them, you know, because I think if the, the change takes time and with a new system like this, um, it's a simply a case of really working with everyone to say, oh, look, I'm interested, I really want to access it, can you help me? Thanks, Aaron. And maybe, um, William, can you, you could give us the perspective from an allergy specialist. Sure, thanks. And, and look, from, from the point of view of specialists in general, it's true to say that we're a little slower on board with My Health Record, and uh, a lot of us are still catching up. Um, one of the problems is that a lot of our specialist software that we use in clinical practices is not conformant yet. And so most specialists, if they take the trouble and time, can read or look at the information on the MyHealth record. Many, including myself, I have to admit, are unable to upload documents or information to my health record. So this is where things are still in progress a little, and over the next year or two, we expect to reach a point where most uh, specialists, as well as most GPs, can interact with my health record. So maybe it's a question of a bit of patience there as things are still sort of happening uh, and in, in transition. Thanks, William. Um, another question here, what if the allergy information is there in my record, uh, but it doesn't look correct? What should I do? Maybe Aaron again, you can give us the GP perspective first. Yeah, no, <clears throat> I mean, I think apart from uh, patients or consumers accessing their own record, the most most of the interaction with my health record is through their GP at the moment. Um, and so it's quite a simple matter. If you would like a shared health summary like Mo is uh, showing, um, it's actually quite a simple process. Just go down, make an appointment with your GP, make sure you're, you're um, clear in your own mind what your current health problems are, what your allergies are, um, and if you've got any collateral information your GP doesn't have, bring that with you. Um, and then really it's just a case of them updating their digital system to say here's your current allergies and maybe put in some extra information so they can not only say what you're allergic to but put some detail behind that to kind of describe exactly what happened or, or um, you know, further information that might be useful for another person in the healthcare system. And then um, all they have to do is there's a little button on their system, they click to say upload your shared health summary and then once all that information's in there, they just click upload and it goes in and then it'll actually be there as a viewable document in your My Health Record. Um, so it's it's very simple and as long as the system is enabled in their practice, they should be able to do that for you. Uh, and in some general practices, the practice nurse participates in that process. And so for patients who might have more complex health care where they see the nurse as part of a care plan, um, you can actively talk to the practice nurse as well in that sort of process. Thanks, there are a couple Karen. of issues. That, uh, there are a couple of points I'll just address with that because I think that's the, that's a sort of a, the, the the best answer from the GP perspective in terms of the shared health summary. 
I, I guess if you are concerned about inaccurate information in the My Health Record, one of the issues is where did that information come from? And if you can see the allergies that have been entered into your My Health Record, you can usually tell where that's been entered from. It may have been entered from a hospital discharge summary or an event summary, or it may have been entered by yourself and it was wrong several years ago, or it may have come from a, a GP shared health summary. And so sometimes it's actually not possible to delete some of that information, and Marwa can possibly even give us more detail on that. And sometimes all you can really do is to add new information, perhaps self-entered or through a shared health summary from a GP that supersedes the previous information. Okay, that's a really good point, can be, It can be difficult yeah. to get rid of inaccuracies or correct inaccuracies, but you can upload new information that supersedes previous information. That's correct. It's important to know, so the shared health summary, one that you've previously published, will remain there, but it'll just be uh, sort of there as a, an out-of-date document. Um, but there's always the key current shared health summary. It's a button that uh, any healthcare provider can press to say view current shared health summary. And that's really important that if you do have a, a information that's in error that you can't remove, um, as William was saying, you know, you can say, yeah, let's update and add new information that'll supersede that old information. So yeah, I think very good point, William. And Maria, maybe you might like to tell us um, if um, what how you found accessing your My Health record as a consumer and um, entering um, allergy information into it. Yeah, look, as a consumer, when I first um, went onto the site and went to download my health record, I was, uh, I felt, I did feel a bit overwhelmed by it and wondered whether, uh, you know, my technology skill uh, was sufficient, but um, I found it uh, quite intuitive. Um, I found that the, the information shared that is available does help you get to that point. Um, and, um, you know, seeing how it was, it was um, uh, you know, the formatting on the, on the, uh, on my health record and so forth, I found, I found uh, easy to navigate. Um, one question I do have is around communication of, of allergy. Um, for a, from a consumer perspective, do we presume that if a doctor can um, access my health record, that they have the allergy information that they need, or should we communicate our allergy information verbally with, with that health professional as well? That might be a question Maybe. for Marwa. I think it's important, Maria, to um, always um, advise your healthcare um, provider. So let the doctor know that you are uploading to the My Health Record and it contains your allergies, um, because um, at times it's not a part of um, routine process for them. So not every healthcare provider that you see will actually have my health record um, as a part of their routine practice. But certainly if you direct them that there is um, information there that reflects your health status, you'll find that they'll be more eager to have a look if they are connected, um, as in the case of most GPs and most public hospitals, you know, with, um, you know, we're talking in the 90% um, being able to, or having the capability to um, contribute to the my health record um, and view the system so I would definitely encourage um, that you advise them to to look there as a source of information but also I want to add if you do see something in your my health record and you feel that you know there is something that's incorrect there you're not able to edit the the, the so you can't edit a particular document but you can remove it entirely from the record so I guess that's something um, you know as a patient or as the carer of a person that you can weigh up whether you would want to remove a document um, you know if you feel the information in it is um, inaccurate to the point where you know it's the allergy information is completely wrong for example that you want to remove that document entirely um, or whether you're simply happy with um, seeing your general practitioner to um, update that information and have that um, reflect the, the correct details um, but in terms of um, control you can actually remove documents from the record. Oh, really, could I correct a little misconception that often uh, patients bring to me when we're, we're sitting there and I'll, I say, oh, look, would you like me to put uh, a shared health summary in your My Health record? And they say, oh, haven't I already got one? Um, and I think there's a perception out there that the My Health record kind of magically gets updated whenever your GP updates something in their software or when stuff just goes in there. 
Um, and that's not the case. They actually have to, have to press a button to make it happen. And that's I think that's intentionally built that way to make sure the information is checked before it's submitted into the record. Um, so that's a really important point. Unless you've asked someone to put a shared health summary in your record, it won't be there. Um, and uh, the, the second part is that you've got to think of your My Health record as essentially like a filing cabinet for your medical information. It's not proactively going out and informing your healthcare providers that you have an allergy or speaking to their system and telling their system, hey, there's an allergy here. Um, and so you can't rely on it to proactively notify someone, but it will be there if they go looking for it. I'd like to just add a couple of points to that. Thank you, Aaron. Um, I, I have a number of people who we test for penicillin allergy, and that's one of the things we do, as you know. And I just went through the last dozen patients who I've tested for penicillin allergy to see whether I could help them to correct their My Health record. And 10 out of the 12 didn't have penicillin allergy recorded in their My Health record in the first place, even though they'd known themselves or thought themselves to be allergic for many years prior. And in most cases, the penicillin allergy was in the doctor's referral letter. So it's interesting that a lot of people have allergies that are not on the My Health record, and that, that's something to be aware of. You can't assume that the allergy will have been entered there by your GP necessarily, unless you ask them and check that that's the case. And um, the other point that you mentioned, uh, Aaron, about accessing, absolutely the My Health record won't go out and tell anybody anything. It can be very well difficult. It can be either easy or hard to access. And at the moment, again, there's one of these things that's still a bit in development. So I do some of my work at the Royal Adelaide Hospital, and I can tell you that once you've got a patient's medical record open, it's like two clicks to get to their allergy my health record section, or their my health record allergy section, I should say. So it's actually quite easy. Whereas in my private practice, I have to go through about five minutes of worth of clicks to get to the my health record allergy section. So it, it, it does make a big difference. And in the emergency department, for example, I believe that most, most emergency department doctors are checking my health record these days, because it is so easy to access when you've got the patient record open in front of you. Thank you. Um, and I think this next question is, um, you know, particularly um, relevant in, in what we're all going through um, all around the world, but particularly in Australia with my health record. If I get the COVID-19 vaccine, will this um, show up in my, my health record? Yes, it does assuming their, their system's working properly. And act, in fact, it's compulsory for Australian vaccines given now to be reported to the My Health record. So essentially, general practitioners are mandated to, to put your vaccine information into your My Health record, as are pharmacists, anyone else who gives a vaccine in Australia. Okay, yep. so if everyone's getting their flu vaccination at the moment while they're waiting for their COVID vaccination, that information will go into the My Health record as well now. There's a delay That's of great. a couple of days, isn't there, I believe? So, uh, yeah, um, I think I've got 48 hours to upload it. And I, it's, for us, it's a, an overnight process that just happens automatically. Yeah, Marwa, yeah, you probably I think it's, know. Yeah, it's like, um, depending on the software that's being used, some software does it in real time, so as it trickles through, and some do a batch upload, so it sort of waits till the end of the day and uploads all overnight. But essentially, within 48 hours, it should that's the window that they're given um, to, to have it done by so that it reflects their current status. Okay, I think Marwa, this mine might be for you. Um, how far back does my health record go? Sure, so um, my health record was um, first, uh, so the opt out um, period I think was around 2016, so that's when um, you know, the My Health Record, um, I guess the, the opt-out system, which is um, essentially, you know, you were given a period of time to say, I don't want a My Health Record created. And if you didn't, one was automatically created for you. So if that was the case, um, and your My Health Record has been around since, um, since that time, you may find that there is information there from back then. And that would be things um, that are automatically uploaded um, unless you you know, go out of your way to say, I don't want them uploaded. And those things are things like um, dispense records from a pharmacy that was connected to the My Health record, um, prescription records from a prescriber, um, things that you know, are automatically uploaded, like um, a discharge summary from a public hospital. Whereas things like, um, as Aaron mentioned, the, you know, the shared health summary from your general practitioner, that's something that you will be aware of because um, it's, you actually have to um, 
um, go through that process to, you know, to prepare that document and um, for the GP to prepare it and upload it. And often that's done in conjunction with um, the patient or um, the carer um, to upload it to the record. So you will find some information um, there, you know, immunisation records, um, Medicare documents. So, um, you know, the medicine supplied under the PBS or, um, you know, doctors you've visited. Um, so the um, Medicare billing item numbers will also be there. So there's there's some things that you will see um, in the record um, from when it was created. But if, for example, somebody has opted out of the My Health record, or if we're talking about a person who's um, recently um, become a citizen um, and has got a new Medicare card, and so they're given the option when they're creating that Medicare card of would they like a My Health record created, um, and they elect to um, um, create one, uh, you know, if, if they're new, I guess, to, to the country, then it would, wouldn't have any prior history in it. But if it's someone who has, um, you know, they're, um, they've had a Medicare card for years, but they have opted out and they've chosen now to enrol for a My Health record, which does happen, um, they get the choice at the point that they're creating that record of whether they'd like to have the record pre-populated with two years, so the last two years of Medicare information. So all the Medicare item numbers, um, so the, you know, the um, healthcare providers that you've seen in the last two years, um, you know, all of that Medicare information. So um, medicines supplied under the pharmaceutical benefits scheme, immunisations, um, information that's stored in the, you know, from the Australian Immunisation Register, um, all of that for the last two years can be pre-populated if you choose to have the record pre-populated with that, but you can actually choose to have the record start blank um, and then you would fill it from then on. Um, of course, we do encourage that you do take an active role in um, what's going into the record by checking what's uploaded and encouraging um, your healthcare providers to contribute to the system as well. So that, that then actually leads on quite nicely to the, my next question here, which is, can all health professionals access uh, my My Health record? Yes, so any healthcare provider um, in Australia is able to access the My Health record, but they do need to be using um, either a conformance software, so um, a software that um, is conformant with the My Health record, and that does mean it needs to go through um, a stringent process to ensure its integrity and security, and that it's not going to compromise the My Health record system, because obviously it contains sensitive health information, and we do need to protect it, uh, the the information within it. Um, and that's one option for them to access. And if, if we're talking about general practitioners, certainly there's an array of conformance software available to them at the moment. But if we're talking about specialists or allied healthcare providers, unfortunately, um, most of their software is not conformant at this stage. Um, and the agency is working on um, improving that um, in, in the, you know, in the coming um, financial year, the the, there is work actually that started prior to this, but continuing on to this, focusing on specialists, pathology providers, um, allied healthcare providers and private hospitals to um, create or to working with the you know, software um, makers to ensure that their software product is actually conformant with the My Health record system. In the meantime though, um, those healthcare providers are able to access through the national provider portal, but as, um, Dr. William Swift mentioned it, it is a bit more of a, a few, there's definitely a few more clicks to get to the My Health records through the provider portal than when you're doing it through conformance software because you're having to get into a whole different system and log in um, to confirm your identity. Now, it's not just about using a conformance software. You as a health, so as a healthcare provider, for example, as a pharmacist, if I'd like to access the My Health record, I need to be accessing it through an organisation that's connected. Um, so they've applied to get a, you know, a unique identifier for the organisation um, and all the unique identifiers for each of the health professionals that will be accessing the system must be connected to that um, organisation number. And this is all so that we can trace back exactly who and when um, is accessing the My Health Record system. So which healthcare provider is accessing through which organisation and for which patient at what time so we can audit everything. But essentially, all healthcare providers are able to register to access the My Health record. 
So I'm just going to ask a question to our panellists. Um, firstly to um, Aaron and then perhaps William. Do you have a conversation with your patients about my health record? Do you, do you talk to them about it at all? Certainly I do, yeah. So it typically comes up when something's changed. So I'd say if there's a new diagnosis of significance or there's a new allergy recorded or um, perhaps we've done a vaccination, um, and, and it particularly comes up with those patients who have the most complex healthcare, where I know they're attending maybe hospitals and specialists and maybe a couple of different specialists. Um, and so, yeah, that's where we actively have the conversation around it. Um, and as I mentioned before, typically in relationship to care planning for, if we're, if we're doing a care plan for someone with complex needs, we'll often say, you know, let's maybe do a, health, a shared health summary as part of that process. And William? Yes, so look, I'm certainly discussing it more often these days, but I have to admit it's a relatively recent thing, perhaps only the last six or 12 months that I've really been engaging with it myself. And so some of my colleagues are probably, uh, you know, even, even a little behind on that. I mean, the fact I'm on this webinar means I'm interested in the area. Uh, but interestingly, I've also found that um, patients, it's it, because when I mentioned my health record, um, I actually get a very, relatively low recognition factor. So if patients are complaining about doctors not engaging with my health record, I can say the same for most of my patients. And so when I say, look, do you think this allergy is recorded in your my health record or should I put it there or should, should we just talk about how you can put it on the my health record? Many of them have no, either no idea what my health record is or, oh, yes, that's that thing. I don't know much about that. So, you know, it works both ways. And I, I guess at the point that that raises, really raises the point that we're all learning, we're all working our way through this and it's really still at the moment a work in progress. And so the answer is I am certainly engaging with my patients, particularly those with a severe or dangerous allergy, obviously, where I think it's really quite important that it gets onto the my health record. And, um, and occasionally those where I need to take an allergy off the my health record, so yes. Um, I think there's, there's actually a related point, Sandra, and that is that um, I think this is a great thing. I'm a, I'm a big believer in patients owning their own health information because we know that people who take a more active interest in their own health actually have better healthcare outcomes. They stay healthier for longer because they look after it themselves. And, and this is what my healthcare record, or my health record does, is creates that ownership of health data. Um, but a lot of people aren't currently kind of taking ownership of it. And I think there are certain people who do seem to take an interest. And I think the, the situation from a healthcare consumer, like, you know, and, and I'm one of those as well as a, as a healthcare professional, um, is for blood test results and radiology results, um, there are still some of the private providers not uploading um, the results into your My Health record. And there are plenty that are, um, or at least some that are. And I think that's this is a point where consumers can actually pressure these um, providers by voting with their feet. And if there's a, a pathology company that you go to that's not putting yours in there, you can say, oh, I don't want to go there. I want to go to a different one that is uploading it so that you've got your in charge of your information then you have your results because it's in your interest to have that information um, and, and you deserve to have it. You know, you've, you've had the test, you might have paid for the test. Um, and so, and it's a great way if you want to access that and you want to track your cholesterol, now you've got a great digital box to put it in. So um, I think, think about that if you're a, if you're a consumer. I think, Aaron, the important thing is, though, that, you know, sometimes consumers may not be able to interpret those results and, um, you know, making sure you go back to your doctor to, um, you know, to have the doctor explain results to you is really important and then to have them to show them to other health professionals is, is certainly, um, you know, a, a step in the right direction. Thanks. So I've got another question here, uh, which might be for Marwa to answer. Um, at what age do I stop having access to my child's record? Sure. So at the age of 14, you're able to access, um, you know, if you've got children under 14, you'll be able to view um, information in their record and update um, information as needed, um, similar to how you would update your own My Health Record information. But once they turn 14, um, you're no longer their representative and they actually need to make you um, what's called a nominated uh, representative for them um, from that stage if they wish to do so. And that will then allow you access to continue um, 
to um, update information in their My Health record, but this is something that they would need to give you permission um, to, they would actually need to um, create that opportunity themselves um, if they're ready to do so at 14. Thank you. I'll just do a last uh, call out to our audience to say we've only got uh, about another five minutes left. So if you've got any other questions to pop them in quickly for us. Um, the next question here is, uh, I'm not sure how to add my allergy information. Um, is there a section for that? Um, I can take this one. Um, I would strongly recommend um, the resources um, from the National Allergy Strategy website and I've brought them back up um, on the screen. The links um, are there. So there's how to add allergy information into my health record and this was that um, document that um, I've had uh, there that actually takes you through screenshots um, of how to um, update your My Health record with allergy information. So um, very, very um, simple and easy to read through with those screenshots of the steps in the process. So I strongly recommend um, that you use this resource. And as I mentioned, there will be um, a link to that um, resource in the handouts that will be emailed to you in the post event email. I guess the other thing to mention as well to people is um, about the security. So Maria mentioned that, you know, when she first went into her My Health record, um, you know, well, there was a few steps to follow. Um, and maybe, Marwa, you can just talk about, you know, the reasoning behind that because of the security. Of course, you know, the My Health record contains, um, you know, sensitive health information and so it's important that we all protect um, the integrity of that whether you as a consumer um, when you attempt to access and that's why there's that you know um, additional steps to log in for example through MyGov you know with that SMS code that you get that um, you know dual confirmation that this person who is attempting to access um, this My Health record is indeed who they say they are and they are entitled to view this um, health information um, or this sensitive information um, and similarly with any healthcare providers that um, want to access the My Health record system we recognise that enabling that access um, is certainly beneficial um, for the patients um, as well as you know making the job of finding that information a, a more simple process for the healthcare providers saving them time but we need to find that balance because we do need to ensure that any request for that information whether it's from a conformance software from a doctor um, or whether it's through the national provider portal is being requested by a healthcare provider who is authorised to access that information and that you know there is always that audit trail of who is accessing this from where and at what time so that we can be able to pinpoint exactly what's happening and you know monitor it. The agency has um, a cyber security centre that actually operates 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So um, any anomalies, so for example if you know a person resides in Perth and their My Health record is you know being accessed in Sydney at some weird time in the morning that'll trigger some flags and some you know investigations to make sure that that is indeed a valid request for that information. So um, the agency is very very vigilant with that. Thanks. We've just got a couple of minutes left, so I'm going to ask a one last quick question of, of William. Um, if I see a private allergy specialist, will they add information into my health record? And I think you've sort of partially answered this in your response before, but um, but I'll put the question out there. Well, look, I'm sorry to say the answer is probably not <laughs> at the moment. Um, firstly, because uh, as I say, I'm uh, there are probably only a, a half a dozen of us who are very familiar with all these procedures, although I've been giving talks to some of my colleagues and intend to continue to do so interstate to make sure that uh, allergy specialists can uh, are familiar and will do more work to, to do that. But also, as I said, I, I can't actually even do that myself even now because my software isn't conformant. So what I would do is give the patient a, a handout uh, advising them the national, a printout of the National Allergy Strategy handout or write a letter to the GP to say, look, do you mind uploading this into the, with the next shared health summary? Or perhaps do you mind d downloading or deleting the previous health summary, uploading a new one with updated information in it? And I'll specifically say that 
uh, to the GP and ask them to, to do that. And I'm hoping that very soon, my, my, my software provider has informed me that they're having an upgrade coming along any minute now, which will enable me to upload uh, allergy information. But I'm hoping that'll happen soon. So look, as I said, sorry to say, still a work in progress, and um, I'm hoping that that will happen over the next you know, six or 12 months. Certainly we are told that within the next, by, by the end of the year, most specialists will have access to conformance software. But I have to say, some of my colleagues don't even use um, clinical information software or medical software. They're still, you know, pen and paper. So I think we've got a bit of catching up to do, I'm afraid. Thanks, William. The answer, the answer is and for the, when... the person to enter their own information where, you know, with the help of the National Energy Strategy um, uh, guidelines. Thank you. Um, and I welcome so... that letter from William. And... <laughs> I really welcome that letter from William because then, you know, really this is communication is one really important aspect yeah. and, and talking to each other and making sure both systems are updated um, is really important. One really important final comment that I mentioned about the National Allergy Strategy um, Guide and how to do this yourself, but at the end of that there's a section which says ask your doctor what terminology to use, what words to use, because you might think, that you might not be sure of how to describe your allergy or what exactly it was that caused the allergy. And so if you're not sure, and, you, and obviously this is an, you know, it's an important or serious allergy, if you're not sure how to do it yourself, um, bring along that National Allergy Strategy Guide or, or send it or email it or fax it to your doctor and say, look, do you mind just filling out the bit at the end that says what words I should use to describe my allergy to make sure it's accurately described in the, in the My Health Record, because you really want to enter accurate and valid information if you, if you possibly can. Yeah, that's a really important point, William. Okay, as we are in a consumer webinar, I'm gonna give uh, Maria, our consumer, the last right of reply and say, is there anything that you would like to, um, any last comment you'd like to make about my health record and, and, um, and allergy information? Look, I think the important thing here is that um, the thing, the take home message for me is that the more active I am in um, communicating with my doctors and in making sure that uh, information makes it to my health record. And if I have specialists who don't currently have software that speaks to my health record, that I can um, be the conduit to, that speaks to my GP to try and make sure that I have an accurate record of my health because at the end of the day it's that information that everyone is aware of that's going to help me live my best life. So it's about having current information that helps me and the people caring for me um, give you know, the best advice to, uh, to, to improve my health care. Thank you, Maria. And so I'd, I'd like to wrap up our webinar and say thank you very much to our presenters and our panellists. Um, and thank you to everyone for joining us um, this evening. And um, we hope that you will um, visit the National Allergy Strategy um, website and access the information um, or also visit the um, uh, Australian Digital Health Agency uh, website with um, the wealth of information that is also available there. So thank you again to everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.